I was fortunate the first uh, year or two of my career when I first got launched, I uh, would, my basis was uh, construction. My dad was a carpenter, so I got into construction early and decided to become an architect. And when having become one, uh, the commissions were few and far between. So what I would do was take on construction work. And uh, I could do this as providing I designed the building, I was allowed to also build it. Having completed a uh, rather large uh, uh, remodel to a building in Bel Air, uh, one of the decorators uh, uh, suggested that I speak to a friend of hers at the hotel. She was the interior designer for the hotel. They were looking for an architect and couldn't find one to suit their time requirements. And they thought maybe my construction background uh, can speed things up. So I met with the uh, manager of the hotel, a rather young guy to be a manager. I think it was in 1971, the latter part of 71. And uh, he had told me they had interviewed, quite frankly, quite a few architects. And uh, they could not find one that could get the plans done in time to ensure construction because they had a problem with opening date. They were fortunate to get Sammy Davis Jr. to be their opening lead, knowing if they had him, because he was one of the largest stars at the time, they could get others to follow. There was a penchant among the entertainers in L.A. not to perform in L.A., which used to be quite a nightclub town with Ciro's and the Combo and a few other clubs that closed. But since Vegas became popular, uh, Vegas could afford to pay enormous salaries because they weren't looking to make a profit on the entertainment. They were looking to draw people into the, into the casinos. So um, the word on the street was, uh, oh, don't, don't overexpose yourself in Los Angeles if you're an entertainer because that'll cut back on your Vegas uh, desirabilities and uh, that's where the big money is. You don't want to cut back on that. But Sammy didn't believe it. And uh, there was a question as to whether we could make this a nightclub town again, but the owner of the hotel, the Shine family, Chicago family, said, we think we can do it. So we had a meeting and I discussed with them my program, which was kind of unusual. We only had slightly over three months to design, build, permit it, and get the club open, which was an impossible task. And the way we elected to solve it was uh, not just by putting more manpower, uh, you know, like getting each other's way in the construction process, but to work 24 hours a day. And the way we accomplished that was uh, we had our regular general contractor who worked from eight to four. The hotel, because it was so old, had a, uh, uh, a maintenance staff of a plumber, electrician, painter, and carpenter, about six, seven guys. And we expanded them into the hotel's own construction department. They each hired helpers. And at the time, I uh, did some work for a studio head who just recently uh, was appointed head of MGM Studios, a man by the name of James Aubrey, and I had done his remodel to his home. And he had disclosed to me that part of taking over the studio, they were going to have to let off some of their stagecraft help, their electricians, carpenters, and talented people that they had with stage lighting and electrical work, and that's precisely the guys we needed. So uh, I said to him, you think they'd be interested in working at the hotel, but they'd have to work at night? He said, oh, they always work at night to get the stages ready for a morning shoot. That's not the problem. So there we had it, three separate crews ready to work. All we needed was the plans and the uh, approving of the entitlements from the city. The engineering was the biggest thing. No one engineering company would undertake it. So. We employed three separate companies, one to attest to the uh, safety of the hotel itself, which 
which was built in 1920, and wanted to make sure that it was going to be seismically safe for the public. So he concentrated on those calculations. The room itself was like a football field, flat and level, and the stage was at one end, and only the first third of the people at that end really had a decent view of the stage, which was another reason why none of the entertainers in town would play the theater, because they'd have two-thirds of the people going away saying, I couldn't see the show, couldn't hear it even. So we reconfigured the theater into, there's, I have a, uh, a photo here on the interior. What we did, we made levels. This is not a novel feature. They did it in Las Vegas in the, uh, in the uh, cl performing clubs there. But you made three, three different levels, put the stage in the middle of one wall of the room so that it was surrounded by more seats that had better view. And that was the plan. And even the railing had, uh, we made it out of plastic and uh, had illuminated uh, uh, the tubes of plastic were able to be lit for safety reasons so people knew where the railing was and yet they weren't uh, interfering with what was going on on the stage. And uh, part of my job was to work uh, with uh, Sammy Davis Jr. in providing the first green room room where the actors go to put on their makeup and prepare for the show and shake hands and receive the accolades afterwards. And uh, I was instructed, give Mr. Davis whatever he wants in that green room. If we don't like it, we can tear it down later. Well, they always liked it and they kept it, but Sammy and I had a rapport which went on for me to become his architect and remodel his house later on. In any event, Sammy also had another unique feature. When we were discussing the staging and the lighting and the things we needed, he always said he missed a center stage theater. He always liked to work in the middle of a crowd, be, be surrounded by the people he was entertaining. I remember when I asked him if he wanted to come in stage left, stage right, or the center, he said, I want to come in the center, but I'd like to get out into the room, into the middle, and walk through the room, but then nobody could see me as well. So we devised the system with the aid of these talented stagecraft operators we got from MGM Studios to have the first that I know of telescoping projecting stage. He would come out in the middle and start his song and then the stage or a portion, a six foot wide portion of it, would slowly move out into the audience. And by the time he was at mid-song, he was in the middle of the room also. And it was dynamic. It was a dynamic performance. 